It was sometimes easy to forget that the cast of Roseanne wasn't actually a real family. That's how much chemistry they had, and it was crucial to the sitcom's nine stellar seasons from 88 to 96, with even a short-lived revival in 2018. But for this show, it started at the top, an authentic feeling marriage between Roseanne and Dan Connors, and it dealt with everyday challenges of the working class that most of us belong to. This series felt real, genuine, and genuinely hysterical. <laughs> Good to see that the classics still hold up. <laughs> I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and today we're checking in on the Connor clan to see what led them to Roseanne and how life has gone since the family disbanded. If you enjoy this deep dive, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a throwback. Now we gotta go. I hear a harmonica wailing. Roseanne Barr. Roseanne leads the family. She's crass, sarcastic, and not afraid to tell it like it is. Yet Roseanne is simultaneously a hardworking and dedicated mother just doing the best she can under tough circumstances. Roseanne Barr co-created this successful series, which overcame the odds and reached number one in the Nielsen ratings for just its second season. Barr herself overcame the odds too. At three years old, she got Bell's palsy on the left side of her face. She overcame it with time. Then as a teenager, she was hit by a car and suffered a brain injury. Her behavior then changed so much that she was institutionalized for eight months at the Utah State Hospital. And all this provided Roseanne with more than enough ammo for stand-up comedy. Her stand-up bite took her to The Tonight Show in 1985. I hate that word, housewife. I prefer to be called domestic goddess. <laughs> And by 87, she had her own HBO special, which earned her an American Comedy Award for the funniest female performer in a TV special. That same year, The Cosby Show producers looked to make a No Perks family comedy, and Roseanne was just the no frills gal to lead the show. But the same traits that made Roseanne stand out also revealed her flaws. In 1990, she earned backlash after singing, or better yet, screaming, the Star Spangled Banner at a Padres game. where she then grabbed her crotch and spat. Then President George Bush called the act disgraceful. There's no way I'm gonna make those high notes, so I just thought, what the hell, I'm a comic, I'm gonna make it funny. And most recently, Roseanne was kicked off her own revival of Roseanne, after her controversial tweet was deemed racist by fans and TV executives. They showed no mercy for her character, killing her off via overdose. But coming from a woman who, when asked in 2008 what the Connors were up to, she said DJ would have been killed overseas in war, and the family would have lost their home. So, a harsh end to a harsh character. Vote for Roseanne! Or so she hoped when she ran for president in 2012. She announced her bid on Jay Leno's show, saying she would be running as part of the Green Tea Party. Today, Roseanne is 68 years old, and in her words, is feeling good, looking better. Michael Fishman DJ Connor is the incredibly boisterous son, who showed at a young age he could tease his older sisters with ease. What do you guys think? You think your mom needs to lose weight? No! And quite often the words coming out of his mouth didn't suit a young child, but man was it funny. Macaulay Culkin auditioned for the role of DJ, but Fishman was thought to have looked more like Roseanne. Plus, Roseanne was pulling for Michael, who she had met at earlier auditions. Fishman didn't act much besides DJ Connor, but he revived it for its recent spinoff, and he even directed an episode of The Connors in 2020. Today he's 39 years old, and created his own talk show called Fish's Call Sheet. DJ detailing his life in the wild world of Hollywood. Sarah Gilbert Darlene is the second eldest child, with probably the best comedic timing of the offspring. Don't be too late. Hey Mark, two plus two. What? 
Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> she was really funny and likable, and producers knew how crucial her talent was for the show. So when Sarah was studying at Yale, they'd arrange schedules and scripts to her needs. Fun fact, Sarah is the half-sister of Melissa Gilbert from Little House on the Prairie, having the same mother but different fathers. For more on Half Pint, we have two great deep dives into that wonderful series, too. After her breakout performance on Roseanne, she continued TV success, starring on the short-lived show Twins, as well as a recurring role on ER. Sarah Gilbert is also the creator and former co-host of the CBS daytime talk show The Talk. And as a teenager, she dated her co-star Johnny Galecki, which helped her realize that she was in fact a lesbian. Gilbert married singer and songwriter Linda Perry in 2014, but they filed for separation in 2019. Perry actually wrote the theme and background music for The Connors. Today, Gilbert is 46 years old and currently developing a TV series called Bucktown. John Goodman. Dan Connor was a true blue-collar, easygoing family man, and a perfect foil for the abrasive Roseanne. He struggles to maintain composure, but does not struggle in skill. The man often stole the show. Goodman struggled with his weight as a child, and endured some bullying, before his large size yielded success on the football field. He obtained a scholarship to play for Missouri State University, where he began studying drama, with the likes of Romancing the Stones, Kathleen Turner, and Ted Harper. His career began with commercials. Perhaps you remember his skin bracer ad. Thanks. I needed that. And in 1984, we first saw John on the big screen as the coach in Revenge of the Nerds. He was so convincing, I started to side with the jocks. Then in 87, John first worked with the Coen brothers in the Nicolas Cage-led crime comedy Raising Arizona, and he joined the brothers many times over his career. Again in 1991 for Barton Fink, and in 1998, his Walter was very much not out of his element. In my personal favorite, The Big Lebowski. You're entering a world of pain, Walter, man. You mark that frame and eight, you're entering a world of pain. John has also been voice acting since his early days in NYC, wonderfully pairing with Billy Crystal in the two Monsters, Inc. flicks. Oh, I'm feeling good today, Mikey. Yeah! Whoa! Oh, attaboy, attaboy, none of the Throw in Frosty the Snowman and Fred Flintstone in the 90s, and this man has really done it all. In 2009, he opened up about his struggles with alcoholism and his weight. He said at the time, quote, I had a 30 year run, and at the end, I didn't care about anything. I didn't even want to be an actor anymore. Well, we're happy to say he's been sober since 2007 and still attends AA meetings regularly. Goodman then lost around 100 pounds through basic exercising and eating healthy and journaling. Today, he's in his late 60s, and you can catch him on the HBO show The Righteous Gemstones and look out for his next Monsters installment, the show Monsters at Work on Disney Plus. Laurie Metcalf. Jackie Harris is the younger sister of Roseanne, the low self-esteemed yet caring aunt. She was a bit neurotic, but I could believe that those two were really sisters. Metcalf began on the stage with some pretty big names, co-founding the Chicago-based Steppenwolf Company, along with Gary Sinise and John Malkovich. She's been nominated for six Tony Awards, as well as being an 11-time Emmy Award nominee. She took home the honor three times for her Jackie Harris in Roseanne. Other nominated roles include Third Rock from the Sun, Desperate Housewives, and The Big Bang Theory. Quite impressive. Much like Goodman, Lori has a significant Pixar role too, as Andy's mother in the epic Toy Story franchise. Andy! In 2017, she was nominated for her first Oscar for her determined mother in Lady Bird. And today, in her mid-60s, she's currently working on an untitled Ray Romano project. Lisey Goranson. Becky Connor is the oldest daughter, pretty, popular, and very intelligent. Goranson landed this career-defining role in only her second ever audition. Yet she left the show after season five to attend Vassar College, where she was an English major with a concentration in poetry. She was replaced by Sarah Chalk. I cannot believe that they replaced that Darren. 
I like the second Darren much better. And Lisi will forever be known as Becky number one, though she did return for season eight, and also for the revival, in which Gorenson reclaimed Becky, and Chalk was given a different character. Some other notable roles include the films Boys Don't Cry in 1999 and 2010's The Extra Man. Today, Lisi's in her late 40s, and along with starring on The Connors, she was also in the 2019 drama Buck Run. Johnny Galecki. David Healy is Darlene's guy. He's sensitive, polite, and pretty shy. Johnny Galecki began acting in 1987 and would even top this TV fame when he became the highest grossing TV actor for the final few seasons of The Big Bang Theory, making around a million dollars per episode. Leonard, we're gonna be rich. And who could forget his adorable Rusty Griswold in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? And for even more about Galecki, check out that deep dive into the wacky Griswolds next. Today he is 46 years old and enjoys family time with his son Avery, who was born in November 2019. Roseanne will forever be remembered. So extremely relatable for a typical family during the 80s and 90s. So tell us, was your family like the Connors? Who was your favorite character on Roseanne? And what about the new version of the Connors? Any fans of it sans Roseanne? Let us know in the comments below. We read them all. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss out on any of the fun. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks so much for watching.